This is a significantly better donut. It's coated in glaze. The chocolate tastes better. It's got more sprinkles. And I just think that the way the donut gave in my mouth was what I want from a donut. It, it, it gaveth and you taketh? All right, I'm gonna give Six. the Dunkin' a five. And I'm gonna give this Eight. Krispy Kreme a seven. Hi everybody, my name is Shauna and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Hey everyone, you're now listening to part two of episode 125, and you're going to be learning all about donuts. You heard two of the very funny guys from Good Mythical Morning in that introduction. It was taken from a video called Duncan vs. Krispy Kreme Taste Test, Food Feuds. Duncan and Krispy Kreme are the two largest donut chains in the United States. You'll hear about them in this episode. Stay tuned. We'll start today with a little story. My dad has always been the champion of breakfast food. On Saturday morning, he'd be the first up, standing next to a bowl of batter in the kitchen, making a stack of pancakes so picture-worthy, it could have been in an ad for IHOP. You guys know IHOP, the International House of Pancakes? Yeah, they always have really great photography. If my dad wasn't making pancakes, it was waffles. If it wasn't waffles, it was French toast. And always, as a final touch, on top of whatever it was he was making, he'd put a dollop of butter and just enough maple syrup to start your day with a skip. On occasion, my dad would crave savory breakfasts. Right, breakfast that weren't sweet, that had a bit of salt in them. Those mornings, I'd wake up to the smell of bacon. And if you're not vegetarian or vegan, you know the power of that mouthwatering smell. Even from a deep sleep, it'll draw you out of bed to the kitchen. And sure enough, when it happened to me, there'd be bacon sizzling in a frying pan. And in another frying pan, he'd be making eggs, scrambled Sunny side up, over easy, you name it. Are you getting hungry now? <laughs> Wait for it. On special occasions, my dad would wake up at the crack of dawn. That's that moment when the night starts to turn to day, when you see the sun coming over the horizon, but it's still dark outside. And he would drive to our local donut shop. It was called the Jelly Donut. He would get there before they opened for business, and the moment they unlocked the door, he'd make a beeline for the display case. To make a beeline for something, right, beeline, it's very odd, um, means to go quickly or directly in its direction. If a concert is starting, you might make a beeline for the entrance or for your seat. My dad would make a beeline for all of the shiny, warm donuts in the display case the moment the jelly donut opened for business. I know. I know. It sounds a little gluttonous. He has a sweet tooth, though, and his appreciation for donuts runs deep. It's in his veins. It's in his heart and soul. So he'd look at the selection of traditional glazed donuts over to the maple bars, and he'd pick out a dozen to go, making sure to get one of everyone's favorite. The donut store would pack up the dozen donuts in that classic pink donut box, and he'd head home. And I remember the look on his face as he walked through the front door. He'd be grinning, just like a five-year-old who just got a Christmas present. That smile and that quintessential bubblegum pink box go hand in hand. I guarantee if you carry that rectangular pink box into work in the United States, you'll see smiles magically appear on people's faces. I believed this, and I actually looked it up 
There was a study done by Postmates in collaboration with data scientists, and they discovered that 51% of Americans out of 1,000 people asked claimed that they think more highly of people who bring donuts to the office. In fact, 56% of Americans have brought a box of donuts for their coworkers. Just saying, if you live in the United States, if you are an intern, if you work here permanently, be the person who brings donuts. People will melt at the sight of you. Of course, that is if you don't work with dieting or dialysis or something where donuts would not be as appreciated. Today, we're going to be talking about donuts. You'll learn the history, the stories behind the most famous donut brands, and all about the most popular donuts in the display case. After all, if you're going to be the one who brings donuts to the office, you gotta do it right. Now, to amp up the learning experience, I've packed a ton of fun vocab and phrases into this episode. By the end, you will be able to describe a perfect donut and a bad one in English. You can reuse the descriptive adjectives for other baked goods as well. So anything that was made with dough or batter, and we'll get to the difference between both of those later on in this episode. If you want to get the worksheets that go along with this audio, be sure to sign up to season three or all premium content at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. You'll also find direct links in the episode notes. So without further ado, Let's do this. Welcome to the United States. It's Sunday morning and you have guests over. What are you going to feed them for breakfast? While there are a number of typical meals that can be whipped up in the kitchen, a nice box of donuts will most definitely do the trick. In American English, donut can be spelled D-O-N-U-T or D-O-U-G-H-N-U-T. Both are known and accepted. What's not known or accepted is the complete history of America's favorite treat. The first written record of the word donut was in 1809 by Washington Irving. You may know him. He wrote The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. But obviously, donuts has nothing to do with that. He published the word in a work titled A History of New York. Historians actually believe that these tasty treats date back to ancient Rome and Greece. Back then, pastry dough was dropped into small vats of frying oil, pulled out when golden brown, and then coated with honey or fish sauce. Yes fish sauce. Not quite the sweet toppings we put on today. It's thanks to Dutch settlers that the United States was introduced to a more modern version of the donut in the mid-19th century. The Dutch version was called an oelikoeks, excuse my pronunciation, which translates to oily cake. An oily cake was essentially a ball of cake batter fried in pork fat until golden brown. The texture on the outside was lightly crispy. There was a problem, though, with this early version of the oily cake. It wasn't uncommon to bite in and hit a raw, doughy, or uncooked center, since the balls would not cook as fast on the outside as on the inside. Talk about a recipe for salmonella, right? So if you wanted a fully cooked oily cake, you'd have to fry the hell out of that thing. And the longer it fried, the oilier or the greasier it got. And so to avoid this, the Dutch put dried fruit and nuts in the center. Get it? Dough, nuts? While the etymology of the word donut is debated, many say it comes from the fact that the Dutch version of it was dough with nuts in the middle. Some historians say that the origin of the word comes from the fact that many of the original oily cakes were shaped like 
knots, K-N-O-T-S, knot, dough knots. According to Spruce Eats, in 1847, a ship captain named Hanson Gregory made a gutsy move and cooked his oily cake with a hole in the center. I mean, you can't have uncooked dough in the middle if there's no middle, right? The result was exactly as he'd hoped. Fresh, fluffy, light, and airy, with just the right amount of air pockets. Let me repeat, fresh, fluffy, light, and airy. That's one perfect donut. Rumors spread about Captain Gregory's brilliant discovery. Was the hole an accident? Was he skimping on ingredients? Some said so. Others claimed that the shape was a matter of practicality. Gregory, after all, was a ship captain. He could rest the donut on the spoke of the ship's wheel while he steered. Clever, right? From that day forth, Hanson Gregory was credited with the donut's ring shape. So when did donuts become popular? By the early 1900s, donuts were a yummy treat often made in the comfort of one's home. When World War I hit Europe, female volunteers at the Salvation Army and Red Cross started delivering donuts to men on the front line. As we say jokingly in English, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. And those donuts did the job. They reminded the soldiers of home, and these women were famously dubbed the Donut Dollies. It wasn't until 1920 that an invention was made to mass-produce donuts. The creator of this automated donut-making machine was a Russian-born immigrant named Adolf Levitt. And to his joy, his contraption was featured at Chicago's famous World Fair in 1934. The fair was all about progress, and the donut was being marketed as the next big thing. Entrepreneurs, chefs, and potential buyers saw it. Three years later, Krispy Kreme opened. The story of Krispy Kreme is a good one. Krispy Kreme, the first American donut chain, opened in Winston-Salem, North Carolina in 1937, just three years after Levitt's automated donut-making machine got featured in the World Fair. A visionary named Rudolph Vernon saw dollar signs when he saw donuts. They were a business opportunity, cheap to make, delicious to eat. Nobody up until that point had streamlined the process of making them or produced them in mass quantities. All he needed was a recipe and somewhere to make them. So he purchased a donut recipe from a French chef in New Orleans and started frying from a rented building. According to the Krispy Kreme website, Vernon had only planned to sell donuts to local shops. But when the rich smell of frying dough wafted down the street, people begged to buy some. Vernon gave in. He made a hole in the wall and started selling the donuts hot from the fryer. There are now over 1,400 stores worldwide. As of 2016, Dunkin' Donuts, or Dunkin' after their name change, which started just over 10 years after Krispy Kreme, had 12,600 stores in 40 different countries. Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' Donuts are the most popular donut store chains in the U.S. Krispy Kreme is best known for its shiny, glazed donuts. Dunkin' for its coffee and donut combo, since donuts are perfect for dunking. Dunkin's most sold donut is the chocolate frosted donut with sprinkles. However, if you land at a Dunkin's, you might consider getting a Boston cream. Since Dunkin's started in Massachusetts, home of the famous Boston cream pie, you could try something native to the state. Right? Like the pie, the donut is filled with custard and covered in chocolate. Mm. Favorite donut flavors vary from state to state. Apart from glazed and chocolate-frosted donuts and the Boston cream, 
There are some others that always make the list and that you should know. The first is jelly-filled donuts, or jelly donuts for short, which have jam, fruit preserves, or some sort of artificial substance pumped into the center. Maple bars, which are also known as long johns in parts of the U.S., are delicious. Voodoo donuts, popularized, also a bacon maple bar, and you can get it now in a lot of different places. It's reminiscent of the typical American breakfast with maple syrup, bacon, and pancakes. Old-fashioned donuts are also a must-know. They have rough edges and are more cakey or cake-like. Donut holes or munchkins, if you're at Dunkin' Donuts, are donuts in the form of small balls and are often made from leftover dough. Cronuts. Cronuts became popular in 2013. Cronut is a portmanteau. It's a combination of two words, croissant and donut. And that's exactly what it is. Croissant dough fried like a donut. We can thank a French pastry chef named Dominique Ansel for that. It's now a favorite across the country. Apple fritters are deep fried batter with chunks of apple inside. That's my dad's favorite. A bear claw is a pastry shaped like a bear's foot. Sometimes they're filled with almond paste, other times with raisins. It's not deep fried, it's delicious. And then there are crullers and twists. The definition of each depends on where you're at in the country. A French cruller is made with shoe pastry, and it's light and twisted. In any case, these are going to be more of these twisted-looking donuts. So the list goes on. Some are cream-filled. Some are powdered. Some have coconut. Some have cinnamon and sugar. If you're on a diet, you can get a baked donut. Or if you're gluten-free, then a tofu one. There's something for everyone. The Great Depression, which lasted from 1929 to 1941, was a time of extreme economic hardship. It's then that donuts became a staple of the working class. And that's a quote from Sally Levitt Steinberg, the grandson of Adolf Levitt. Nowadays, the average American eats 31 donuts per year which, if you do the math, translates to about two to three donuts per month. That's a lot of donuts. How many donuts do you eat per year? So what's the recipe? One of the highest rated donut recipes online is for homemade glazed donuts, and it calls for the following ingredients. Milk, yeast, sugar, eggs, butter, salt, vanilla extract, nutmeg, flour. If your donut is light and airy, it's quite likely that it was made with yeast. Yeast is a rising agent. It makes dough rise. The term dough is, of course, a mixture of ingredients. It's thick. We use dough to make pizza, to make bread, to make cookies. However, if your donut is cake-like, like a blueberry donut or an old-fashioned donut, donut holes, Chances are it was made with baking powder and a sweetened dough or batter. Dough and batter often confuse people that are non-native English speakers. Just to clarify, while dough is thick, batter is wet or liquidy. When you want to make pancakes, crepes, cakes, and brownies, they all start with batter. Even when you deep fry something, usually you dip it in batter first and then throw it into the deep fryer. While the definition of a good donut is subjective, most would agree it is possible to screw up. Even someone with a sweet tooth doesn't want an overly sweet donut. Overly sweet, overly salty, overly anything is not good. Nobody enjoys when a donut maker goes overboard on toppings. In other words, when they put too many toppings, when they put too much, like if the donut is swimming, in frosting or glaze. It's one thing to be on a sugar high after a donut and another to be completely sweeted out. 
To be sweeted out means to feel sick from eating too much sugar. I usually get sweeted out on Halloween night after I eat a lot of candy. A bad donut might also be an undercooked donut. You can describe it as raw or doughy. If you have an old cake-like donut, it's probably dry and crumbly. An old yeasted donut might get chewy if it's really old or just hard. Some donut shops and most grocery stores offer discounts on day-old donuts or end-of-the-day donuts. But ask yourself, is it worth it? The quality of a donut immediately goes down once it's taken from the fryer and hits air. So don't run the risk of buying a stale donut. In general, we use the term stale to describe old, bread-like products. Stale is the opposite of fresh. You can have stale cake, stale donuts, stale bread. Nobody wants it. It's at the point you're going to throw it away. Once again, you can describe a good donut as being fresh, fluffy, airy. In the introduction, we heard one of the hosts from Good Mythical Morning say, it gives in your mouth. And I just think that the way the donut gave in my mouth was what I want from a donut. That means that it doesn't fight back when you're biting down. It kind of bites down with you. A good cake-like donut would, of course, be moist. A lot of people hate that term, but it is what it is. A little bit wet in a pleasant way. And if you have an old-fashioned, yeah, you can describe that as moist on the inside and then crispy or a little crunchy on the exterior or on the outside. Before we wrap up today's episode, I want to share three fun facts about donuts. Fact number one. Flip on an American series that's filmed in Hollywood, and at some point, you'll probably see a pink donut box come into view. What's the deal with the pink box? According to the LA Times, in the 70s, Cambodian donut makers in LA discovered that Westco, one of the big suppliers, offered pink cardstock at a much cheaper price than white cardstock. As Lincoln says, a penny saved is a penny earned. Right? So a few pennies saved meant higher profits. Other donut makers followed suit. Nowadays, most donut shops on the West Coast, apart from Dunkin' and Krispy Kreme, sell donuts in that bubblegum pink box. Fun fact number two, there's a stereotype of policemen sitting around and eating donuts. Guarantee you've seen it in a movie. What's that about? While not Every police officer heads to a donut shop while working. There is a relationship between the police force and donut shops. And it all started with the odd hours of operation. Officers who work the night shift or graveyard shift, we call it, can grab donuts and coffee before the sun rises when nothing else is open. Donut shops, of course, love it. Many offer discounts to firemen, military, and police officers. Fun fact number three, the first Friday of June is National Donut Day. And on that day, many donut shops will give you a free donut. Put it in your calendar. Secondly, there's National Donut Appreciation Day on November 5th. As if we need an excuse to celebrate donuts, but yeah, kind of funny. From my knowledge, most countries have a prized pastry-like treat. Many immigrants bring these treats to the United States. French beignets are all the craze in New Orleans, Louisiana. Churros are a hit in most Spanish-speaking communities here. When you're in Hawaii, you can't miss out on Portuguese malasadas. In my opinion, though, donuts feel very North American. Yeah, Canadian too. I'm not excluding Canada from this. Tim Hortons has some awesome maple bars. But my question to you is, how North American are donuts? On one hand, shops are everywhere, and there's a lot of pride in making good donuts. 96% of Americans love them. On the other hand, the most original recipe was Greek, or Roman. The one introduced to the U.S. was Dutch. 
The original automated donut making machine was from a Russian born immigrant. The original recipe for Krispy Kreme was from a French pastry chef in New Orleans. The cronut, which is now a national favorite, was invented by a different French pastry chef in New York. The pink box, Cambodians in LA. That's a pretty good melting pot of people from everywhere involved in this donut making process. Just like North America. What would North America be without immigrants, right? So are donuts North American? I'll leave that for you to decide. When my family lived in Woodland, just about five minutes away from my parents, we used to leave boxes of donuts on their porch and then doorbell ditch them. To doorbell ditch is when you ring someone's doorbell and then run, so that by the time they make it to the door, there's no one there. We thought it was so cool and so funny. The fact we just left the donuts there, Santa style. We watched as my dad went to the door and found the surprise, and I can't express the excitement on his face. Donuts for my dad and for Homer Simpson and for many others is like snow on Christmas. There's nothing better. So I dedicate this episode to my dad, the Donut King. If you want to see images of some of these donuts, take a look at my Instagram page at American English Podcast. And if you want to dive deeper into the bonus material, sign up to premium content. You can find the links in the episode notes and also on the webpage at AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Hope you have a nice day. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon. Knock, knock. What's there? CIA. CIA who? CIA, your last donut. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.